The Book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 8 Now as a summary for the things being spoken, we have such a high priest who sat down at the right of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the most holy place, and of the true tent, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, therefore it was also necessary for this man to have something which he could offer. For if he was on earth, he could never be a priest, as there are priests who offer gifts according to the law, who serve in the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was warned by God when he was about to make the tent, for he says, See that you make all things according to the example which was shown to you on the mount. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, and he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I did not regard them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be to them for God, and they shall be to me for a people. And they shall not teach each man his neighbor, and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. In order to say a new covenant, he has made the first grow old. Now the first is being made to grow old, and becoming old, it is near to vanishing away. Hebrews chapter 9 Then indeed the first tent also had righteous ordinances of service and an earthly sanctuary. For the first tent was prepared, which was called the sanctuary, in which was the lampstand and the table and the setting out of bread. And after the second veil, the tent which was called the Holy of Holies, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid all over with gold, in which was a golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And far above it, the cherubs of glory overshadowing the mercy seat concerning which it is not now for me to speak even in part. And these things, so having been prepared, the priests always entered into the first tent, completing the services of God. But the high priest went into the second alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offers for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the most holy place was not yet manifested while the first tent was still standing, which was symbolic for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices, which were not able to perfect him who served according to the conscience, which were only in grain and drink offerings, and various washings, and fleshly ordinances being imposed on them until the time of setting things right. 
But Christ, having become a high priest of the good things to come, through the greater and more perfect tent, not made by hand, that is, not of this creation, nor by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the most holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the defiled sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And because of this, he is the mediator of a new covenant, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who were called could receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a covenant is, the death of the covenanter is a necessity to take it up. For a covenant to the dead is sure. It is never strong while the covenanter lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every commandment to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. And likewise, he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law cleansed with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. It was therefore necessary for the examples of the things in the heavens to be cleansed with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter into the holy places made with hands, which are antitypes of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters into the most holy place every year with the blood of another. For then it was necessary for him to have often suffered from the foundation of the world. But now, once, at the end of the ages, he has appeared to annul sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is laid up for men once to die, but after that the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to those who wait for him, he shall appear a second time without sin for salvation. Hebrews chapter 10 For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, but not itself the image of the things, is never able to perfect those who draw near year by year with the same sacrifices, which they offer continually. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For once they have been cleansed, those offering would have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance of sins every year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice an offering you have not desired but a body you have prepared for me. For you were not pleased with burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Then I said, See, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God, saying before, Sacrifice and offering, and whole burnt offerings, an offering for sin you did not desire, which are offered according to the law, nor were pleased with. Then he said, See, I come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he could establish the second. 
by which will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once. And every priest stands daily, ministering and offering the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From now on expecting until he puts his enemies for a footstool of his feet. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. And their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. And where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, having confidence to enter into the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold firmly to the confession of our hope, for he is faithful who promised. And let us consider one another to stir up to love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the custom of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the full knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment, and a fiery zeal coming to devour the adversaries. Anyone who set aside the law of Moses died without mercy at the word of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose he is thought worthy who has trodden on the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant with which he was sanctified common and has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days, in which, after you were enlightened, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Indeed, in this you are made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations and in this you became companions of those who were being so ill-treated. For you also suffered with me in my bonds, and accepted the plundering of your goods with joy, knowing in yourselves that you have a better possession remaining in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of patience, that having done the will of God, you would receive the promise. For yet a very little while, and he who comes will come, and will not delay. Now the righteous shall live by faith, but if he draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not drawing back into ruin, but we are of faith for the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 11 Now faith is the basis of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a witness. By faith we understand that the ages were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, by which it was witnessed that he was righteous, 
God bearing witness to his gifts, and having died, he still speaks through it. By faith Enoch was translated and did not see death, and he was not found because God had translated him. For before his removal he obtained a witness that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for it is necessary for him who comes to God to believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God of things not seen as yet, being in godly fear, prepared an ark for the salvation of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out into a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as a foreigner, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the joint heirs of the same promise. For he was waiting for a city which has foundations, whose builder and designer is God. By faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and she gave birth when she was past childbearing age, because she counted him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, who was almost impotent, were born as many as the stars of heaven in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore without number. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and sojourners on the earth. For those who say such things are making it clear that they seek a country. And indeed, if they had remembered that country from where they came out, they could have had a time to return. But now they look for a better country, that is, a heavenly. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham offered up Isaac when he was tested, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, to whom it was said that in Isaac shall your seed be called having counted that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from where he also received him in a sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, remembered the exodus of the sons of Israel and commanded concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a handsome child and they did not fear the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he became great, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than having the pleasure of sin for a time, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he was looking for the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of blood, that he who destroyed the firstborn should not touch them. By faith they went through the Red Sea, as by dry land, by which the Egyptians were drowned when they attempted to do it. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were encircled seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who did not obey 
when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time will fail me to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and both David and Samuel and of the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the mouth of the sword. They were empowered out of weakness became strong in war and put to flight the armies of the foreigners. Women received their dead raised to life and others were beaten to death, not accepting deliverance that they could obtain a better resurrection. And others received a trial of mocking and scourging and more of bonds and prison. They were stoned, they were sawn apart, they were tested, they died by slaughter of the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a witness through faith, did not receive the promise. God having seen something better for us, that without us they would not be made perfect. Hebrews chapter 12 So then, having around us so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the leader and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such opposition of sinners against himself, that you do not tire, fainting in your souls. You have not yet resisted to blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the correction of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure correction, God is treating you as sons. For what son is he who the Father does not correct? But if you are without correction, of which all are partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For well, they indeed for a few days corrected us according to what seemed good to them. But he for our profit, in order for us to partake of his holiness. Now no correction for the present seems to be joy, but grief. But afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who are exercised by it. Therefore lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet that the lame should not be turned aside, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, watching over them, lest any lacks the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up troubles, and by it many are defiled, lest there is any fornicator or profane person, as he saw, who for one meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, it was not allowed, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. For you have not come to the mount that is touched, and that was burned with fire, and to thick cloud, and to darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words 
which those who heard responded that no word should be added to them. For they could not endure the word which was commanded. And even if a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a javelin. And so fearful was the sight that Moses said, I am greatly afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels, to the assembly and church of the firstborn, who are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men who have been perfected, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who warned on earth, much more shall not we escape those who turn away from him from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And the word yet once more indicates the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that were made, that those things which are not shaken would remain. Therefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace through which we may serve with reverence and godly fear, well-pleasing to God. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 13 Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to be hospitable, for by that some have entertained angels without knowing. Remember those who are bound as being bound with them, and those being ill-treated as you yourselves are also in the body. Marriage is honourable in all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Conduct yourselves without covetousness, being content with what you have, for he has said, I will surely not leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Remember those who lead you, who have spoken to you the word of God, whose faith imitate, considering the result of their conduct. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and for the ages. Do not be carried about with various and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established with grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have walked in them. We have an altar to eat from, of which those who serve in the tent have no authority to eat. For the bodies of those beasts, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he could sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go out to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For we do not have a continuing city, but we seek for the one to come. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually by him, that is, the fruit of our lips confessing his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey your leaders and submit, for they watch for your souls as they will give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is not profitable for you. Pray for us, for we are persuaded that we have a good conscience in all things willing to conduct ourselves well. But I exhort you more abundantly to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. 
and the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, perfect you in every good work, in order to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory for the ages of the ages. Amen. And I exhort you, brothers, endure the word of exhortation, for I wrote to you with a few words. You know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Greet all those who are leading you, and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. Click center to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click top right to see more videos. And go to our website to see great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies, and lots more. God bless you.